Good morning, Janie and all her viewers. Welcome to my pollinator garden. My name is Crystal and I garden in zone nine along the Texas Gulf Coast, south of Houston. And it is really hot and humid and we have heavy clay soil. Typically, we get lots of rain and I garden specifically for the activity that you're seeing here. I've got hummingbirds and all different kinds of butterflies. And to be able to do that, I have to have lots of different plants. I garden in natives, but not just natives. So I have what are called host plants. The little orange butterflies you see flying around here are called Gulf fritillaries. And they lay eggs on a host plant called passion vine. And my passion vine has flowers that are gonna open up. They open during the day. Let me see if I can get over here. Oh, no, this one isn't even open. It's a nice, pretty purple color. But I have lots of native plants too. This happens to be a native flame acanthus that is a host plant to the Texas crescent butterfly and hummingbirds and pollinators of all types. Butterflies too love this plant. So I have native bees. I also invite birds to my yard and they hate, help me take care of pests. So let me show a different vantage point. So I have all different kinds of plants. And when I choose a plant at my local favorite nursery, I look at a couple of things. I look at if it can attract these pollinators or if it's a host plant. And if it does both, oh my gosh, that is the ultimate. I think diversity of plants is really important in your yard. This is probably the number one plant for nectar in my garden for both hummingbirds and butterflies. This is called a porterweed, which is in the verbena family. It is not a native, but then next to it, I have a native, which is a paniculata flux that was discovered in San Antonio. And this can take our heat and humidity. It's called a John Fanuc flux and the swallowtail butterflies love that. And I have all different kinds of little microclimates, but diversity is key. I like to garden vertically you'll see a native coral honeysuckle. This is one of my first bloomers in the spring and it also not only provides nectar but it provides berries for birds and shelter. And I have that trellised. So the area I've shown you is pretty much my sunny area, full sun. So I'm going to go over to this other area in the garden, and that is my shade area. I love the color and intensity of my shade garden. Although I can't grow some normal shade plants like Hookera and Hostas, I can certainly achieve gorgeous color with Coleus and Caladiums, and they love it down here and then top it off on the end with a shrimp plant. I love looking out my patio and windows to this shade garden because it always has tons of color and activity going on. And whenever I'm out shopping, I always am thinking of either having host plants or nectar plants or plants that will provide berries for birds or seeds I always have that top and foremost in my mind.
my advice to gardeners would be to start small, otherwise it can get very overwhelming. Shop local, if at all possible, and then know your growing zone, know your climate, know your soil, know what works well, because if you plant things that grow well in your area, you're gonna have success as opposed to trying to plant things that you see, that you think, oh, this is gorgeous, and it's just not going to survive in your area. So thanks, Janie, for coming along with me as I've shown you my pollinator garden. I hope you all have a wonderful day.